Hello and welcome to Media 7. In this week's show, the Broadcasting Standards Authority and what's fit to screen. The BSA holds a special place in New Zealand's media environment by virtue of its statutory authority and powers. The Press Council and the Advertising Standards Complaints Board, by comparison, can't administer much more than a telling off. The BSA is complaint-driven. Unlike regulators in some other countries, it doesn't have, say, specific lists of banned words. Its governing standards refer to, quote, current norms of decency and taste in language and behaviour. And it's part of the BSA's job to determine what those norms are. So, is it the nanny state in action, or a bunch of faithless liberals out of touch with their community? Joining us are BSA Chief Executive Dominic Sheehan, Lindsay Freer, the spokesperson for the Catholic Church in New Zealand, and Oliver Driver, shareholder and creative director of Alt TV. Now, the BSA administers standards governing, on one hand, the essentially journalistic matters of balance, fairness and accuracy. On the other, the grey areas of good taste and decency. It's the latter we'll be dwelling on, the likes of these. Wake up! Take off! Fecking Father Ted, which, according to a 2004 complaint, not upheld, portrayed Catholic religious leaders in a disgraceful way. Take off! The tragically unfunny Pope Town, ditto. Hello, my Schätzchen. And the South Park Bloody Mary episode, featuring the Virgin Mary in a context that many Christians found offensive. People from all over the state have flocked here to the church to witness the apparent miracle firsthand. A few highlights from the long list of complaints made by officials of and adherents to the Catholic Church in New Zealand. And then there's the other side of decency. In the headlines tonight, local stone guy understands maths for a moment, hot girl at party discovered to be not so hot post sex, and Bill English and John Key in an impromptu push up competition. I have no fucking idea what this means. How embarrassing. TV's Naked News Flash featuring Lisa Lewis reading an auto cue. Um, Dominic, if I could start with you because you're not involved in either of those. The BSA is tasked with uh, programming against current norms of decency and taste in language. How do you actually go about determining what those norms are? Because I have a funny feeling that Lindsay and Oliver will have quite different ideas. Sure, exactly. And that's, I guess that's the whole point about current norms. Um, you're not necessarily going to get two people who, who agree what they are. I mean, we're an evidence-based regulator, so obviously we need to base those current norms on something. Um, and, and to the large degree, with good taste and decency, we would do that with research, for example. So we would research every three to five years on certain scenarios, certain words, certain things that people might find... What do you ask people? Do you actually present them with the images and the words? Actually present them with scenarios, actually present them with words and say, in this scenario, would you find this language offensive? In this scenario, would you find two men in bed kissing offensive or not offensive and those sorts of things and judge that? Um, obviously there's, there's only so far that research will go. Um, the board members themselves obviously have to make some, you know, some calls as to is this good or is this bad. Um, we also have a community advisory panel which is made up of 10 people from, from across New Zealand and they're really there in a very informal sense but again they also give us an, a, a sort of window into to what everyday people are thinking. Now, now Lindsay, that sounds like to me there's a, there's, there's a degree of science in there uh, and yet you still feel that the BSA doesn't properly represent community norms and standards. Why? Well, I think, um, you know, you can do all this research and have all these stats, but the fact remains that um, around about 70% of New Zealanders, according to the last census, are people of faith people for whom there is a sense of the sacred, for whom there are boundaries to be drawn, and for, who, for whom uh, offences taken when those standards are, in their view, grossly I'm not sure if you can presume to speak for, the, for, for those 70% of New Zealanders. I think though. I can speak for a lot of them, because I know when we were talking about that, um, that television programme South Park, the Bloody Mary one, a letter was sent to C4TV, signed by Catholic and Anglican bishops, by leaders of other Christian churches, by the Council for Christians and Jews, the Interfaith Council, the Salvation Army, the Mormons, etc., asking um, Media Works not to screen it because they would all find it very offensive, knowing what it was going to be about. So I think, you know, there's a wide body of people, not just Christians, for whom those things are sacred and, and who feel that this is just sort of crossing the line. And yet, if, if you look through the, the BSA website and search for Catholic, there's pages and pages of complaints from 
people associated with the Catholic Church almost never upheld. I mean, do, do you seriously go into every complaint expecting that you win it? No, no. I think we like to say we pick our fights. I mean, you know, a lot of things you kick for touch. There are a lot of Catholic people who would say, um, oh, I think you should be complaining about this or that. And we look and think, well, I mean, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of Catholic humour. Father Ted, we saw... No, I think it's those things that are, are seen to be grossly offensive, and I think we have to be very careful about the ones. However, the Broadcasting Standards Authority only upholds something like about 12%, Dominic, I think it is, of complaints that you actually um, give decisions upon. So it's a, it's a very small number. The, num the number changes year by year. Obviously, there's no, there's no set, and we don't have to uphold a certain number of, of complaints. It, it's, I mean, because every complaint is dealt with in context on the facts... How, how many of those complaints would you regard as vexatious? What, of the complaints we get every that, that, that we get every year? I mean, we we determine we determine the vast majority of complaints that we receive. So there's very very small number that we would we would cons consider are vexatious complaints. Now that, that is your view, Oliver, isn't it? Is that the majority of, of the complaints made to the BSA are from? Not France. necessarily the majority. Just before we do that, did you watch the episode? South Park. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, were you offended by it? Did you, did you see the, the yeah, Alcoholics Chris. Anonymous oh, yeah, side and of it that, and the, the message that, that they were trying to yeah, tell with that? Yeah, but I thought the whole thing was crass, though. Right. I, mean, that particular, I mean, I'm a South Park fan. Yeah. I have a son called Kenny, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, my issue with the, with the BSA is, is... I have two main issues with the BSA, and it's one that you don't seem to be able to take into account the history of the complainer. And so if you have a serial complainer who complains about everything, you have to take that in the same basis as any other complainer that they would. And you can't, like any of us would, or like newspapers do, if you have somebody who writes in a letter every single day complaining about every single thing, you go, it's potty old crazy person, yeah. let's ignore them. Yeah, not, not necessarily, but you, you finish all of them. We'll, we'll but, 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 you know, yeah. you, you have to take each account, each complaint as a, as yeah, a serious and standalone complaint. we can, we can determine certain complaints as, as being vexatious, for example. You know, and, and, you know, we do have complainants who... Quite frankly, they've complained about the same thing over and over, and, and it, it really is an asked and answered situation. I mean, and sometimes they go away, and sometimes they get onto a new. new the other side of it would be the sheer number of people who do complain. I mean, if you take a, a show like South Park or Eating Media Lunch or something like that, that's say seven hundred thousand people watch, and you get twenty-five complaints. I mean, what's a landslide of complaints for you? What's just a flood of complaints? We had about fifty on, on so South 50, Park, and I think that let's was, call that. that was a and you'll and you'll use language like we've had that's, a flood. That's still fifty people who have been moved to go through that process. People out of eight hundred people, 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 people out of eight hundred thousand. That's not there really. There weren't 800,000 people watching South Park. Well, how many people were watching South Park? Shall we say? Oh, I think it's about 150,000. I think wasn't it? So it's, 50, it's a minority. So 50 program. out of 150,000. Yeah. Is that really a democratically cohesive? Uh, you know, so, surely if it was yeah. extremely offensive to people, we would get 50,000 complaints, 100,000. However, complaints. however, uh, we've got a population we, of you know well over. Yeah, but Ken West brought the program forward by a couple of months, and so because of the the interest that had been generated, they just sort of hit us with it and said, "Put me on television, set me up," and said, "We're putting it on." tonight. And so we're quite certain that it wasn't the normal demographic who would be watching that programme for that reason. I have to say, I've heard this logic before, sorry Lindsay, I've heard this logic before, Lover, and I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I mean, what, if one person fi finds, you know, the, the time to end the, end the patients to complain because the process itself is... Well, because we live not, in a democratic country, simple. and so therefore, if we take a show like Eating Media Lunch, which 900,000 people do watch, and we get 20 people complaining, and you say a flood of complaints, that's not a flood. Yeah. You know, 900, 20 out of 900,000, if I had 900,000 people in the room and asked well, 20 of them to walk over there, we people wouldn't say, look at the flood of, of people. I say, I mean, well, the language a, is, sort of, is, yeah. is often used as, you know, we've had a, a huge amount or we've had a, a large amount, and you're talking in numbers but, of 10. But bottom, bottom line, one complainant yeah. or 20, the, the, the show is judged against the standards that the broadcasters themselves have said that they will follow. But if you then... have to hold that thought, Oliver, because we're going to have to take a break, we'll be back. And um, after the break, some topical news mash and a look at how long the BSA will be relevant in its current form.